Ooh, a storm is ravaging the Netherlands, but instead of that, we're going to talk about detailing robots. How we go from this to this. So for today, let's take a look at some of my favorite robots, which are Transformers. And we have good old Generation 1 Bumblebee here. And I thought let's tackle him because in last week's live stream, we also talked a little bit about him. And he's a great example because he's super simple. Uh, he has almost no detail, no joints uh, to speak about at all. Let me go to my red color so we can see we have a couple of lines that suggest some sort of detail and then we have a couple of lines here that tell you that oh that that arm can bend and that's all the detail that you get out of this guy so what i did i uh, redrew his legs and feet i guess a little bit and added just a hint of detail to the lamps because our volkswagen beetle has lamps and they were missing there and i think it's cool if we if we add those and what we're going to do is we're going to steal a whole bunch of detail and we're not going to steal from other artists we're going to steal from reality and uh, that's why i'm always saying use reference this is all about reference we can steal from sci-fi movies which is technically stealing a little bit from artists but not really because everybody uses greebles greebles are all these technical things these small things that you can see in spaceships in between like bigger areas and if you think about it there's also there these here they're not little things because these things are huge if you want to imagine a spaceship like this so these are all big mechanical things that make the whole ship run another thing that i really like are these foresting machines they have these claws that hold on to the tree cut it out and then also they can run the whole uh, trunk of the tree through it and debranching it really awesome machinery a lot of detail it has a lot of articulation cables fantastic if you want to get inspired another thing that i really like is uh, american freighter train engines for details again you have this beautiful lower um construction you can see that it actually has feathering to make the ride easier even though they, these are heavy machines and then you have all these nice panelings with the bolts and i also took another image uh, this is a cat cat vehicles also great if you want to do industrial stuff also has all these nice panelings little doors knickknacks that can open but also you have all these bolts and then the two different colored things coming together so i think this is all great inspiration for our um, detailing experiment and what i'm going to do first and foremost i'm going to duplicate there we go this layer and we're going to have some section where we have articulation right so before i continue uh, when you have a leg so this is the lower leg, this is your knee, this is uh, your ankle, so this is your ankle, and then you have some more articulation here in your leg as well. So that's what we need here, we need this sort of articulation. Let me take this away, which means that here, I'm going to erase this a little bit, we are going to have some sort of, you can even think of hinge, doors work on hinges so you don't have to think of it necessarily as uh, articulation but that's what it is uh, what you can do is we can take a look at the wheels here and within the wheels you have these i wouldn't call them hubcaps but they have this interesting floral shape with the angles there i can steal like half of that you don't have to take all of it i can just rotate it around put them in here put two in there as well and it already looks a little bit sci-fi interesting and then what we're gonna do is just draw this a little bit further along and then create its housing because it's not just floating there so close this off another thing that i really like here in the train and what i am going to do is just do something select select this whole area because it's just so cool Control shift c uh, and then control V here. There we go. Just so I have it a little bit closer. So you don't have to do this, but I just wanted to have it a little bit closer. Make sure that I draw on the correct layer. And now I can take some of this really heavy looking feathering system and just apply it here as well. Uh, we sort of have a sole to our feet, right? So I want my little bumblebee to have that sole as well. We have this uh, bumper in the front that is just maybe it's separate it sets apart from everything else uh, what we can think about is also 
give it also also like make it human a little bit give it some i don't know if it's called texture what you have on the bottom of your uh, shoes but just so he has a better grip so i'm sort of copying here a general shape that you can see in the train as well. I'm trying to keep everything as non-organic as possible. These shape have to the shapes, they have to look manufactured. So I'm gonna take the feathers or the springs in this case, what you would call them. So we just have cylinders, and what we do is we draw this sideways ellipses onto our cylinders, and that gives these nice feathering feeling i'm gonna make sure to lock it into some sort of mechanism uh, i don't know how visible it is here but you can see it a little bit that it's there and you also have these sort of cables running through there now because this is a robot you have to think about you you want to show some of these innards but you want to have as little of it exposed as possible at the same time right so make sure that you have a whole bunch of panels that sort of cover the cover the area that not 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 that you can shoot it easily if they're in a fight or something um so we have let me see for this one i would say uh, let me bring this a little bit lower here and lower the opacity like that i would say we can steal this area maybe and a little bit from here as well so i'm gonna add two smaller these can be turbines engines i really don't care too much what they are how they function but they look pretty cool in this case and they suggest some sort of functionality and then i just built a housing around them so that is let me close it there and the same thing here and then this would be the housing for that one something like that uh, then i'm just gonna suggest a thickness to this one and i can just make the rest dark there i really don't care it's it's too the, the space there is too small to actually draw details in there as well what we can do is suggest some more like holding something that is holding the whole thing up there something for this as well there you go and then for this upper part of the leg well we can still let me just add you can do a little bit more paneling here you can make some division lines add some of the bolts that we just saw make sure this has a thickness as well something like that you can add cross hatching if you want to that works fine as well there we go and then i just make sure to finalize this leg or sole as i said area as well this could have a thickness to it as well close it there and there we go and then i just do some more cross hatching because we know that's where this part ends uh, yeah that's that's looking pretty good i am missing something there i feel like i want to push this a little bit out of the way let me see if i can get inspired by some interesting shapes that we have here what might be helpful for me here i like that we have a tank here it's some sort of propane tank or something like that we could add something like that here and then also just i would adjust this area of the leg that it would hold this tank there you go something like that because as we know your your leg doesn't like if you step this it doesn't go backwards it, it only goes up and th that little so it, it doesn't go all the way back so it should be fine there uh, as we started here in the beginning i wanted to have a distance between these two there we go now you can suggest this cylinder ends here and in between i would suggest some sort of metal frame as well that is maybe running along it something oh there we go i think that should be nice and now it depends also on you how much detail you want to put into these upper legs i would say let's take some inspiration we have doors we have 
railings. Oh, obviously, you don't want to put railings on the leg of a transformer, but we could put some of these sort of details in here, especially because this area in here is on the inside. So I would say we can cut this into half here. So that should work. And then suggest maybe it should have like some sort of vents here that we just saw on our train model as well. So we can add that. So it would have something like that. It's nice to have cutting lines as well. So we can add a cutting line here. So this is similar to the cutting lines that we saw on uh, the original one. They just had it close to the knee up there and we have it down there. You can immediately transfer it here as well, just so we have it on this side. Obviously this side I'm going, we, we have less detail because this is the outside of our leg and because legs and humans generally are symmetrical, we can imagine that this side is gonna have the same detail as the, the side that we already did. Something I just noticed is we can make this a little bit darker. There's no reason for this to be that light in there. We can also add quite a bit darker areas there. Uh, and then back to the inside of the leg, let me see. I think this is where we can take a little bit of this greebly action as well. So what I would say is we can have sort of another cutout here because we, we don't need that to be... We also, you think about this material, just always think about a little bit about functionality. Not too much, it doesn't need to be super realistic but these materials are inside of the car, so you want it to be as foldable and as light as possible. And if you make super heavy plates everywhere, that's gonna be harder. Like people will see it and subconsciously something is, is off about this. They will maybe not know what, but something will be off. So for the Griblis, I will try and take some of, you see this, how it's constructed. So some of that construction, uh, let's add maybe something like a Y frame or something like that. And then the Griblies below it, but it might also not work. It's worth a try. Sometimes it will just not work. So I'll just go for the Griblies. Let's take a look at these. It's all sorts of little details, boxes, knobs. I don't see triangles, but you can see uh, ellipses and stuff like that. So we're gonna implement stuff that looks mechanical to me, at least. We have some sort of box that has these black openings in it. And uh, next to it, we have some maybe lines that go into this rounded object. And then we could have some sort of housing going around this that gets thinner there and thicker there. You want to make sure that you give it like a 3D feel. So give it thickness just because we did draw in 3D. Uh, and then just keep on having fun with all these shapes. Go a little bit nuts in it because these are going to attract the eye to this area and the rest we will leave a little bit more empty. Just because if you have an area that attracts the eye like this, you will also need areas where your eyes can rest and just chill a little bit because they were just overwhelmed by all this detail that you, that you came up with and that you implemented here. So yeah, it is, it is a little bit of a give and a take uh, sort of situation when you add these sorts of details and it's really important that you keep in mind to to let the eye rest as well. So I think that's that's pretty cool. From far that looks good. Don't worry about close up. You don't need to make it super detailed. Maybe just let add, let's add this thickness back so it reads from far. There we go. And that is uh, that is pretty good. One thing I would do here still is maybe we can cheat a little bit. Just copy this. Just to speed up life, I always say, uh, if you have digital tools, just use them. There's no reason not to use those digital tools that are at your hands reach, right? Okay, and there we are. And we have now sort of a knee sort of joint as well. 
you can put it more into place of course here is where i run out of patience because this is all i wanted to show in this video and now i'm like mm, overdoing it a little bit all of this is not that necessary but something like that i would say you can add two knobs there and then also you can figure out how to put the upper leg on it but there's no need to go into super detail with that as well i would say let me turn all these things off Actually, I can bring our friend down here. So this is, this is how you can take something that has a little bit of detail in it to something that has way more detail. Maybe just to make it a little bit more interesting, I would say you can add one more cutting line in here just so it's not super empty. But as I said, watch out, don't do too much because you do not want to overwhelm the viewer and you want that area where the viewer's eye can relax and chill a little bit. And with that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this little insight of how I approach detailing my robots or detailing everything in general. And I hope you could take something away that will help you in the future as well. But as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.